In video 5 we are going to discuss chin and cheeks. Study the muscles and learn where the fat body of cheek is located and what is its impact in the shape of the face. Let's have a look at these photos by of Bill Gates, Angelina Jolie, uh, Lil Wayne and Justin Bieber. So make it grayscale and find all of the mastication muscles or masseters on these photos. Uh, so the mastication muscle or masseter starts from the zygomatic process of the maxilla there Uh, no, maxilla, it means upper jaw, this bone, oh sorry, no, yes, that bone, that. and goes along the edge of the zygomatic arch, there, then it descends and attached, attached here to the surface of the mandible or lower jaw here attached so in this muscle lifts the lower jaw when we chew you can grit your teeth and feel how it strains so the mastication muscle forms this volume for some people it's greater, which makes the jaw wide than here, not regarding the volume of the bone. It means the angular size of mandible and how much it protrudes. Yes, if the mastication muscle is big, this place will be prominent. If it's small, this place will be small and the face narrow. So, look at this picture, please. Uh, this is the parotid gland. And this is, uh, this is the parotid duct. Here it goes through the vaccinator muscle. And through it, the through the parotid duct, uh, the saliva flows into the mouth ca mouth cavity, and its length is about seven centimeters. Uh, these photos show the mastication muscles and the orbicular eye muscles. Let's mark this spot on all photos. Here, the mastication muscle is attached to the zygomatic process of maxilla. You can touch your face and find this spot on it. So now let's follow four lines uh, that conventionally go from this cavity. Goes up along the lateral edge of orbicular eye muscle goes to the ear along the zygomatic arch goes to the internal eye angle along the low edge of, of the eye orbicular muscle and, and descends along the edge of the mastication muscle so I don't, I don't want to follow it on other faces because because you can stop this, stop this video and imagine how it goes. So now let's speak about the muscles in, in this area. They work when we smile, for example. 
and do like this for example This is the muscle that lifts the upper lip or levator labii superioris. It rises from the maxilla, more precisely at the suborbital edge of the maxilla. Goes down, some fibers are woven in the skin of the upper lip, some in the orbicular mouth mu uh, muscle. So it lifts the upper lip. Uh, so this is uh, the muscle that lifts the mouth corner or levator angularis. It's here a bit deeper and it starts at the canine fossa, fossa below the infraorbital foramen goes to the corner of the mouth uh, and lifts it. So the major and the minor zygomatic muscles both start at the zygomatic bone. The less goes here and joins the, the orbicular mus mouth muscle and the skin and the greater goes to the mouth corner so in general the better these muscles are developed I mean all of that muscles developed and the thicker is uh, the layer of fibro fatty tissue under the skin in this area the bigger is this volume So, and it should be said that the growth of this volume on the one hand makes the nose visibly smaller because it protrudes less from that layer. And on the other hand, the growth of this volume somewhat hides the eyes. They become less prominent and seem smaller. Now let's have a look at, at the chin muscles. This is uh, the depressor angularis. It arises from the low jaw here. Then it goes upwards to the mouth corner and it lowers the mouth corner. So on all of the pictures it's blue. I show how it works. The next one, Mentalis, is located here. It originates from the incisive fossa, fossa of the mandible, goes downwards and weaves into the skin of the, of the, of the chin. Um, and it works... So, let's find Mentalis on all of the pictures. It's yellow. The next it works one like this, angry. the skin of the oh, chin is lifted up. Depressor labia inferioris arises from the mandible just in front of the mental foramen where the anterior fibers of depressor anguli or is covered. Then it goes upwards and is woven into the, the orbicular mouth muscle here. It, it lowers the lower lip and pulls it laterally downwards, lowers the lower lip, yes. 
and I'll show how it works. And it's located uh, in between. And also, I am going to mark out all of the orbicular uh, orbicularis oris muscle muscles, and find uh, these muscles on on the photos with different facial expressions also. So. Let's see how does the shape change. Now let's discuss why a chin can be forked with a cleft in, in the middle. For example, like Demi Lovato's one. As you understand, the chin muscle, I mean mentalis, consists of two bundles. And if you strain your depressed labia inferioris, here in the middle, you can feel a recess between the right and the left muscles of the chin. And the cleft is formed because there is a distance between the right and the left chin muscles. Well, I personally do not have such chin. My muscles stick together tightly and when I strain them, I get a convexity, like uh, a convexity, not a cavity. To feel that there are two of them I need to strain my depressive labia inferioris, so there is no cleft on my chin. Now let's speak about platysm muscle. Uh, and I, first of all I want to show you how it works. And yes, this is one of the mimic muscles. It looks like a white blanket and it has three parts. Uh, mandibular, uh, labial and modules. All three parts arise from the superficial fascia of the upper chest across the upper part of the pectoral and the deltoid muscle and rise under the skin of the neck. The mandibular part is attached to the lower edge of the lower jaw. The labial part continues under the skin of the lower part of the face where it comes close to the depressal angularis Uh, and is attached to the skin of the lower lip. So the modulus, the lateral part of platysma, attached uh, attach of the mastication muscle. Uh, and to the rhizorius muscle and is attached to the skin of the corner of the mouth. Corner of the mouth is also called modiolus. If the layer of subdermal fat tissue above the platysma is, is very thick, a double chin appears. So I mean that layer.
This is the rhizorius muscle. Rhizorius muscle arises from the connective tissue above the parotid gland, goes horizontally and also weaves into the mouth corner. Uh, it w it works when we smile like this. Or stretching mouth corners horizon horizontally. And this smile is uh, this smile also strains the vaccinator. Uh, it classified as a mimic muscle, but in practice its main function is to mesh the food between the molars during chewing. It also works when we blow the, uh, with force or pipe up. It arises from the pterygomandibular aphy. So this is the vaccinator muscle and this is the pterygomandibular raphe. So it's a narrow strap of interlacing sinews. And th then uh, vaccinate the muscle goes through the cheek yes in weaves into the orbicular mouse muscle there. So this is the vaccinated muscle. This image shows that it's covered by a fascia. So here it's in section and above the vaccinated muscle there is the fat body of cheek or fatty ball of Bichard. Also, this is platysma in section. It covered by subdermal fat, fat, the yellow and skin. So let's look at the photos. The lens is the amount, the amount of fat tissue. Uh, the smaller is the spot. Sometimes when the fat body is not big and the cheek muscle is le less developed, this area can be concave. Then it's said that a person has sunken cheeks. To some extent, this is true about Uma Thurman, uh, Pavel Valla and Kate Moss. If someone believes that his cheeks are sunken but doesn't wish to put on weight, it can be recommended to do some exercises for the vaccinators. To work them out and fill this space. Uh, so, have a look at the photos of Arkady Dvarkovich and Shai Alabav. Shai is, is rather thin in general and his fat body of cheek is small. Is small. However, his vaccinators are well developed and have a great volume. And this is why his cheeks are not hollow. Uh, 
Arkady Dvarkovich fat body of cheek is somewhat mm, a little bit greater and his vaccinators are also big and strong. They both are people with relatively sm small masseters. Relatively small masseters. And big vaccinators. This is why the cheeks are so roundish. And that's why the angle of the jaw, lower jaw is so smooth. Of course, this is also caused by the shape of the lower jaw. Um, so, by the way, you can touch your cheek and check how thick they are. So, like this. And actually, I think that Arkady Dvarkovich. Russian Federation President's Councilor and Shia LaBeouf are doubles. They are of the same height build. They have uh, the hands of the same shape and proportions. And you know, I can add another double. Actually, a, a triple now. This is Georgi Kaptelin, a well-known Russian journalist, a host at channel Russia 24. Uh, yes, of course, that is all questionable. I suggest you to compare in the photos, having a look at the features. And mimics. The similarity in the shape of the skulls, cartilages and mimic muscles produces an incredible likeness. The difference consists on hair, of course, of hair, styles, color of eyes, shape of ears. That is absolutely different. Um, yes, and, and the amount of fat tissue. The fat tissue of all three is distributed evenly. So, well, which is not always that case, as I'll explain it later. So, Shia LaBeouf is the thinnest. Arkady Dvorkovich has a bit more fat tissue, and Georgi Kaptelin has the most, which makes his features the softest and smoothest on the three. Uh, so, you can post this, the, the video and look at these photos once again. Sorry. And yes, there is another case of two incredibly look-like men. Sergei Mavrodi and Bill Gates. Shape of bones, cartilages, not only of the face but also bodies too. The same height, hands, cast of features, the same level of development of muscles. But the fat tissue is distributed differently. Bill Gates belongs to the people whose face doesn't gain weight. If such person gains weight, his fat tissue is gathered on the neck. under the platysma muscle, uh, while the rest of the face, cheeks, wings of nose, lips, forehead, are not gain weight. And, uh, well, this is an unequal distribution of fat tissue. Uh, but, uh, however, Bill, Bill, Bill Gates' eyes are not sunken, so I think that there is enough fat tissue in the area of eyes, especially under the eyelids. And he has always been like this.
as you see on these pictures. So uh, this this is his photo from the school and this is from the university. Uh, and Sergei Mavrodi's face, on the contrary, gets weight uniformly. If such a person gains weight, the fat tissue thickens everywhere. Cheeks, wings of nose, tissues under the orbicular mouth muscle, even the lips become bigger. So, this has not happened with Bill Gates. However, his face by the shape of the skull, cartilage development of his muscles is very much alike. And so please look at the mimics once again. I think that this observation is very interesting.